Hey, I'm Tojo. I'm going to show you how to solder the Ashen Fork, keep yourself away from stranger danger, and then show you the best way to loot afterwards. What is the Ashen Fork? The Ashen Fork is like the original fort, but with a red skull cloud, and it's likely something to do with the upcoming update. I often solder this over on my Twitch channel, link below. The original fort used to have 10 waves. You'd kill a captain and they'd give you a fort key and you'd get all the loot out of the vault. The Ashen Fort is the same, but with two additional waves. Additional wave one has a guardian and a key master, and the final wave is essentially a clone of Grey Marrow from one of the tall tales. It just has a different name, but the same abilities. Once you've located the fort, which can be found by just finding a big red skull cloud in the sky, you need to approach the fort. When you get near it, you're going to get the same fort music that you got from the original fort, and if you've never heard it before, it's quite distinct, so you can't miss it. Approaching the fort can be done in different ways. There are definitely blind spots on some of the forts, if not all of them. But me, personally, I just approach it from whichever direction is quickest, and sail at it, and deal with any consequences. With this kind of approach, the thing to do is not die. Don't worry about the damage being done to your ship. Just land your ship in a position where one or two cannons max can reach your ship. Once the skeletons that have an angle on you have been dealt with, you can then repair your ship. Just be careful that some of the other skeletons that are walking around on the island don't walk to the cannons. I'm pretty sure that it's just the skeletons without the bandanas and without the colored clothing on that will get on the cannons. Once you've made sure that no more cannons are firing at your ship, get your ship fixed and ready to sail off to repair all the damage, check the mast, check the helm, and check the capstone. Then raise your sails and raise your anchor so that you're ready to go immediately if necessary. Once your ship is ready to go again, you need to check the local and distant area. The best way to do this is to fire yourself out of a cannon because it will give you the best view around the area. If you do see something, pull out your compass and take note of the direction that you saw it, especially if you've seen a player ship because you want to keep checking that direction more often. The skeletons you killed after you finished your approach will respawn if you die. So if you've stopped in front of a cannon and you die, make sure that when you respawn, that you make sure you kill those skeletons again. If you're perfectly out of range of all of the cannons and you see another ship approaching, one tactic that I like to use is I like to get myself killed in the game to respawn all the skeletons to give myself some more firepower and defense for when another ship turns up. Now that your ship is secure and ready to go, and you know what's going on around you, you're ready to take on the fort. But you're going to need to know what you're dealing with on the island so that you can prepare. You'll end up dealing with multiple waves of skeletons. Each will have a different strategy to take care of them, and each wave will consist of a different type of skeleton. What kind of skeletons that will be in these waves is pretty random, but there's only four types of skeletons. There's regular skeletons, Metal skeletons which require you to lead them through water or throw water on them. They have a high tolerance to sword attacks, but a low tolerance to firearms. Salad skeletons, which have a high tolerance to being shot, but a low tolerance to the sword. And shadow skeletons, which at night time cannot be damaged at all unless you raise your lantern to them or wait until it's daytime. The types of weapons that you'll deal with with these skeletons will be melee or swords, firearms or kegs. Sometimes a wave will spawn with just melee or just using swords. The best way to deal with this is to lunge them, reposition and lunge again. Chances are you're going to knock them back and the ones that you don't hit won't have time to hit you before you can move if you're quick enough. These will be by far the easiest to take care of as long as they don't spawn as metal skeletons. But if they spawn as metal skeletons, your best bet now is to use fire or to stand up by an ammo crate and keep sniping them while throwing water on them. If this happens, this will probably be the wave that takes the longest for you to kill. If a wave has some firearms in, ideally you want to deal with the skeletons carrying the Iron Reaches first, then pistols, and then the blunderbuss. This is because the Iron Reach does more damage than the pistol, and you can keep away from the blunderbuss even though it does do a lot of damage. But if you're careful and you're mobile, you should be fine. While you're moving away from the ones that have firearms, make sure you break line of sight with as many different skeletons as you can that can shoot you. This will reduce the damage coming in on you, and it will make your life easier. Where possible, use your own ranged weapon to take out the ones that have ranged weapons until you get down to the ones that are just using their hands or just using swords. And then go back to the other strategy of sword lunging them. 
if there's only one or two that have firearms left within this wave if you can get them together you can stun lock them with your own sword sometimes though some of the waves will spawn with almost 100 percent firearms this is basically a firing squad and sometimes it's unavoidable to be able to avoid being killed here just remember again if you die the skeletons you killed on approach will respawn so if you're in front of a cannon make sure you kill that skeleton first before you leave your ship and quite often a wave will spawn that has kegs in move away to a safe location and try to use the detonation of the keg if you need to to take out as many as possible at the same time or ideally shoot the skeletons in the legs or in the back to make them drop the keg when they die you're going to need these kegs a little later on all of the regular skeletons have a low tolerance to fire damage however i don't recommend that you use fire on skeletons with kegs but do use it on metal skeletons and they're the ones that take the longest to kill especially when you're solo once you're done with the regular skeletons you'll end up with a couple of boss skeletons the first one will be a regular captain which will drop at present a stronghold skull then after that wave you'll have two more captains one will drop some orders that will show you where a chest is that you can dig up the other one will drop a key that you can use on that chest and lastly you'll have a clone of gray marrow with a different name but the same abilities let's run it back to the first wave of skeletons that you're going to deal with you don't know what you're going to get but what you need to do is make sure that you kill all of the skeletons in the first wave except for the last one and make sure that the last one doesn't have a firearm because what you want to do once you're down to the last skeleton is you want to run around and pick up as many kegs as you can and place them in the doorway to the fort you're doing this because once you get to the finale you're going to use this little gunpowder stash to blow up the final boss i'm not 100 percent sure how many kegs it takes but however many you can use will help you kill the skeleton a lot quicker and when you're solo doing stuff as quickly as possible is important the reason why you place the kegs inside the doorway is because it's the most consistent place on a fort that it makes the ai of the skeletons difficult to pass through without walking around the side some of the skeletons for example that are carrying firearms will take a wider arc to get a better angle at you because they don't need to get up close and hit you with a sword inside the entrance to the fort is very narrow and it forces them into a bit of a choke point and a bottleneck if any of the waves spawn with kegs if possible try and save the ones with kegs till last or take them out early and then finish them off until you've only got one skeleton left then move the kegs again you want to make it as easy for yourself as possible without risking taking out the kegs the remainder of the waves will be completely random and you just deal with them with the strategies i give you above until you get to the final boss the only difference is with the lesser bosses before the final boss is that they have slightly more hp with these you can use fire on these to help you kill them a bit quicker you'll know you're on the final bosses because there'll be a unique horn that gets played and the music will slightly change the finale of the fort involves fighting a clone of gray Marrow, which is one of the bosses from the tall tales this clone has the same abilities it can teleport it can spawn more skeletons and it can slap two chests together and make a big explosion and a knockback the damage you take from this is entirely based on your distance from the clone of gray marrow try and be outside before the boss wave spawns then let the boss run to you once you get to you run past it run inside and take out the kegs if you're a little bit worried about being swarmed by the other skeletons and you don't think you're going to get your shot off correctly take out the rest of the wave of skeletons or as many as you can and you feel comfortable with then run inside it'll make it a lot easier for you to shoot the keg and do as much damage to the final boss as possible then just use your sword on the final boss and take it out it shouldn't take too long depending on how many kegs you have if somebody knows how many kegs it takes to take out one of the four final bosses let me know in the comments below now that the final boss is dead you'll have a vault key that you can use on the vault to get all of your loot however you want to go back to your ship or back to the highest point that you can use to look around at the horizon and see if there are any other player ships around that might cause you a problem if there's nothing around you want to move your ship as close to the fort as you possibly can and to the closest running point away from where your ship is where you can then drop your loot on the island to be able to harpoon it away 
It's much quicker than swimming each piece of loot over individually. Once you've done this, you can do another horizon check, then go and unlock the fort as long as it's safe, and start bringing this loot to the edge of the island. It's important to know that the harpoon has a little bit of trouble with some of the smaller objects. There is a bit of a method that I use when it comes to looting things from a fort or anywhere in general. As soon as I unlock a fort, I normally go for the big three as I call it, which is the bone dust, the stronghold chest and the stronghold skull. This is what people want the most. That's what they want to take away from you with these forts. They see those as the prized possessions. Get those to the harpoon point, then harpoon them back on, do a check around you on the horizon and then go back. Do a little assessment of the area that's inside the fort, find out what loot is there and decide to yourself what you want. If you want more gold, then stack up the highest value items first. So your captain's chest, your villainous skulls, the red rubies, etc. Or, if you're like me, I normally prioritize the items that go towards commendations. So I'll stack those up first, because those have more value to me. I don't much care for gold in general, so that's what I go for. Decide which order you're going to do this in, and if there are any little chests around that you can put other items in, use these chests because it makes it a lot quicker to get the smaller items around and with the problem with being able to harpoon specific items it makes it a lot easier before you leave see if another event has spawned another fort or another ashen fleet this is important because another one won't spawn until someone triggers a kraken which means if you start sailing away it's very likely that the kraken is going to spawn on you and you're going to have to deal with that if you are on a solo sloop though it's relatively easy to kill but if you want to use this to your advantage, you want it to spawn on someone else. It's possible that somebody else within the area will get hunkered down by the Kraken. And this gives you a bit more of time to get away. When you're harpooning the loot off of wherever you've dropped it and you're picking it up, just dump it anywhere you want on your ship. It's not important to organize it right now. In Sea of Thieves, you spend a long time sailing between places and this is when you can organize where you put your loot. Once you get to this stage and you're sailing away, I recommend that you put the loot on the end of the bowsprit. This is because when you get to an outpost, you want to try and dock yourself with your bowsprit just over the dock so that you can either run up to the end of the bowsprit, drop everything on the dock from there, or so that you can keep jumping between the dock and the bowsprit to pick up loot. Any time that you can spend not swimming in this situation will save you a lot of time. And when you're solo, this is when you're most vulnerable. And that's it. That's all I've got for you. That's how you solo the fort as quickly as you possibly can. Right now, as of this video, doing forts is the quickest way to earn gold. So if you're grinding gold, this is for you. I've been Tojo. I've been your temporary ship's captain. I'll see you later. You sure? I think I hit him. Well, he's still alive in there. He can yeah. give me some cover. I can put a grenade over the top. If you get... I can open it from here. Going over. Move. Oh, that's next to me! I know. <laughs> Tell me you're not dead. Tell me you're not dead. Tell me you're not dead. You're dead, aren't you?